Hey, you do what the da 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 Ha ha. Alright. Yeah, you like that? <sighs> yeah. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Hey, you do what the da 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 Yeah. Hi, reporting live from Fox News. Hey, I, I right away, I want, I want to start you off with an easy to way to understand what I'm talking about. Alright, here. Think about something something that everybody knows about. Idiocracy, the movie. I'm sure just about everybody's seen this movie, Idiocracy. And what I love about the movie Idiocracy is that we are so close to making that a reality. The only difference between now and that is the censoring. Censoring, that's it. Censoring is the only boundary we have right now because the censors that we have prevent us from creating stupid names like butt fuckers for, for a place that we could go down to eat. And if there wasn't any of this censorship, that is overnight, you know, considering that laws can't keep up with the, the progress of the internet, Things are slipping through the cracks and uh, people are getting away with uh, forms of idiocracy and, and with that sort of with that sort of mentality. But if people started going to places that were called butt fuckers and uh, they started lo lowering their educational communication even worse than the standards that tech, um, texting has, things would be even worse. It, it's it's a trickle down effect. And if they were as we're loosening up our censorships, it's it's getting worse. People are getting dumber, and therefore everything around us that are, that's happening is just there's more mistakes, there's more flaws, there's more disasters, there's more accidents, there's more of things happening because they tried to create a solution, and then somebody else with, who's just now start who's just getting into that area of information, they go, oh, that's an interesting idea, and they do the exact same thing that the person did previously that that, that blew up or uh, didn't work. And they end up going through the exact same problem. Well, the person who fixed it and, and did it the right way, they're like, oh, what the hell did you just do? You know that now I got I to gotta pay for what you just screwed up? All right, so today at work, <laughs> talking with, with uh, my foreman, and uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking about how fucked up everything really is in our society. It's directly the mentality it's not even things like racism. It's the fact that there are things that like racism that exist to begin with. It's the fact that the, the mentality that it doesn't uh, everything that's happened is is listed and described as things that are causing these these sort of um, changes in the world. Uh, like like just something as simple as what they put as st statistics. When they say that gas prices are going lower, or I mean going higher, because the oil rig uh, broke down or something, or there's an oil spill, it's 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 less of that, and it's more of the fact that we don't have a cleaner source of energy. But they, they shouldn't be concerned. We shouldn't even be getting into this sort of thing. We shouldn't be cutting corners. It's the fact that the reason why the fact that we all operate on separate levels is why everything's so screwed up. Why people have so much hatred, and, and why it's just like. No, everywhere you go, even though everybody, in a general sense, is very happy, and everybody wants the same thing. They want to live a comfortable life. If, if you go to a rant, um, so, like over in Israel and or uh, Afghanistan, and you, and you go to the common people, and all they really want is just not to be oppressed. They just want to live a comfortable life. But the mentality, the way you think, if somebody cuts you off or something, you're going to blow up at them. And trust me, <laughs> uh, it, this is something, you know... It, it's just like, yeah, definitely. You know, there, there's not a person out there that's probably gonna say, no, that's not me. Everybody's got some kind of quirk. You know, something, something that when, when something happens, they get pissed off or they, they have a knee-jerk reaction, and and they try to make it so that way things are better for themselves, rather than trying to make things better for other people. And I understand that there's large corporations out there like the Red Cross and uh, Safe Space, but but that's different 
from individual personalities, and it's the individual personalities that make up our entire society. That I mean, it's the people that rule that rule out the decisions of what laws get passed through Congress. And even though these people are following by book and are going by best regards and are all interconnecting ideas, trying to make sure it all checks out and it all works out how to meet demands, and they try to make it as uniform as possible, you have to have speculation to come up come up with that uniform pattern to come up with uh, what's ideal. Who's to say what's right and wrong? Who's to say that it's better to have universal free health care, have the government pay for it and up taxes, or let everybody pay for it themselves, or or work off of like a bartering system? It, it's all up in the air. However you want to dice it, however you want to explain it, if you want to call it unity or, or defined, uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. Our society is a pyramid where someone has to rule over somebody else. Someone has to have power over somebody else. It doesn't matter if everybody gets a vote because there's still another body that interfects with it. And each person has to have a vote. Well, well, who came up with the, uh, with the ideal of, who, of, of what's being voted on? You know, that was, discovered, that was chosen by one person. Why couldn't everybody work together to just think of one thing? If, you know, what, what I'm saying is, is better education, a higher level of understanding. If everybody w was working towards the same, I'm talking about evolution, okay? Because of the, our evolutionary standards currently, everything works out fine. And the reason why we're having all these these wars and and fighting over thing is be things is because because people want to evolve into unity. People want to evolve into working as one body. Why wouldn't they want to work it evolve into working as one body if they didn't want freedom, if they didn't want democracy? That's the idea of democracy. That's not what's written on paper. Because on paper, democracy is just as much of a scam as anything else. There's just as much bullshit and loopholes all throughout it where people gain the upper hand on other people. Look at lawyers. They profit off of um, ignorance. So basically, we all want to be better and greater, but we're just too, too lazy and too stupid. And going back to evolution, you can look at how evolution all in general terms refers to physical changes refers to different textures of skin uh, pigments to just to life and uh, throughout our lifetime we we have out of a couple thousand years that we have been around um, what is it 50,000 uh, in total that they have on record of us being around and it's only like you know, about two or in the past two or four thousand years we've been really productive we've really started to show, show some change and there's been a lot of things that have changed like goosebumps I mean when we were in our earliest species, uh, goosebumps were used as a form of making the body look bigger. It was also a way for when it, there was cold weather for um, for the body to attract, uh, attract more moisture to get warmer. And uh, the cold part of it is still there because there's still people living in cold climates. But when you get angry at something, someone, the, most people don't get goosebumps. We used to. Very few people do. Which is why I've heard some people say that black people are lower on the evolutionary scale because physically they have a lot of traits they have a lot of bones and such that the more evolved people don't have the, the body has gotten rid of those and other people because it doesn't need them and yet the black people still have them they still have the dark pigment to, to fight off skin cancer and such and I'm not trying to be offensive or anything it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make him any less of a person it just means that they're physically, they're different. It's it's not only, it's not just a skin color, you know? They're physically different. They have bigger bones. Uh, and in earlier species, we were shorter and thick boned, so that way we could uh, handle heavy weight and we, we'd be more dense. In a sense that we were tougher. The, the bone was very dense. It was, it was very hard to get through. Um, we could take cuts. I mean, if, if, you, if you've looked at ancient um, skeletons of early man, of the thick bones, they'd have cuts in them and, and all kinds of damage marks that you could see that had to have happened throughout their lifetime, but they still survived through them. If that happens today, you'll lose an arm <laughs> because people's bones are a lot smaller. And uh, as the, the bones are dwindling down, we have things disappearing, like the Jacob's organ. It's it's a part. It's a, it's like a, a bone in the nose that that for other animals, it it alerts. It's, it sends a it gets a chemical sending uh, through the body. It sends a chem it tells the brain to start sending a chemical um, when when there's danger around, when there's something bad going on, or or it'll it'll alert the brain when there's sexual um, there's a female nearby because uh, it can because it can smell the pheromones in the air. I'm sorry, not smell, detect. 
it has to detect the pheromones. It can't smell the pheromones. It had, that's for other glands to do. And when was the last time you were able to smell somebody horny? I mean, if someone gets really horny and they're like breathing on you, you can smell the change in temperature in their breath. But it's not like a dog where if you're 10 feet away from them, you can smell them or, or 100 feet away. But at one point in time, it was. It's not like that now. And we also have a lot of junk DNA. We have a lot of DNA that we, we don't even use anymore. Things that are that were used to process uh, different different vitamins and such that that are just uh, not used because we don't need them. We only have the vitamins that we need now. Right now, the only reason, the only thing that this DNA even does for us is it helps us indicate what other species we're related to. You know, but for now, we're still apes. So we have a long ways to go before we can go beyond evolving out of the ape like species. And uh, we've had a lot of other physical traits. We'd had extra ear muscles so that way we can move our ears around like dogs. Uh, we still have a muscle on our foot that's very undeveloped. It's really small. It's it's they call it the plantaris muscle, and it basically allows it allows a person to control the heel of their foot. See, flat being flat-footed that's a new thing. Early man was not flat-footed. They had a big arch in their foot, and even before that, we were living in trees. Before we, we, we had evolved into ground walkers, before we had a straight spine, we had to be in trees. We had to be one of those small little lemur-like monkey, uh, no monkeys, but a small ape. Because we're not monkeys, we're, not ape, we're apes. And uh, we had to be some kind of small ape that, that used the bottom of its foot to clamp onto the tree. But it's so undeveloped right now, we can't even move. <laughs> try, to move try to move the ball of your foot. You can't. But at one point in time, we could arch it forward to touch our toes. We could use it like a, a, a thumb, you know? Maybe there was a thumb there. It's completely gone now if there was. I like to look at the gorillas, and I think it's so interesting, their anatomy. Because in a way, their anatomy is so much like our own. I know a lot of people think that chimpanzees mentally are a lot like us, but I think gorillas, physically, they have a lot of the same characteristics of what an early man would have looked like, except a lot larger. Maybe like a very, like a baby gorilla would probably be what I would imagine like a full grown person. We were a different species. We weren't human. We were a completely different ape. And uh, the, the wisdom teeth. I mean, there's also the same, the thing that all apes have: the third eye. The if you if you look if you open up your eye, you see that little that little um, that little that little cross membrane in the corner. That little cross membrane was originally so that way the eye there for a third eyelid to go across. And basically, almost all apes have that third eyelid there's um there's only one species of ape or monkey i'm not sure if it's a monkey or an ape that still has the third eyelid uh i believe it's called uh loris 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 yeah loris it's an african monkey or, yeah and it still has the third eyelid it blinks it which is it's it's a clear eyelid that we used to see underwater we don't have any more and that's just proof that we came out of the ocean duh and there's also the, uh, a lot of people argue about the Darwin's point, uh, the point in the ear that helps uh, pick up sounds. And there's changes in the spinal cord and the appendix. But ultimately, we are going through a lot of changes. And that's most of the changes right there. I could also start to talk about how the size of the brain is changing. Skulls are changing. The size of people's feet. I'm not talking about other things. I'm talking about just feet, you know, feet are changing. And in a way, we're almost, it's almost like we're no longer evolving. You can almost start calling it mutating because we're not really getting ahead. <laughs> and because we're, we're falling backwards, but we're getting new things. We're getting changes, we're changing. But it's not for the better, nature-wise. Uh, surviving in the wild is really crippling us more than anything. So you can't call it de-evolving either because if we were de-evolving, then we'd be able to live better in wild life. We, we'd be doing better out in nature. We'd be doing better against diseases. But we're not. We're not de-evolving. And we're not evolving either. We're, because de-evolving and evolving are both forms of increased uh, ability in one way or another. We're in some sort of in-between area. We're in a mutation. We're mutating. We're dying. <laughs> our, our race is falling apart. We're, we're losing this battle. We need to stop treating it like a battle. We need to start uh, realizing that, hey, this planet uh, we're just little fleas on it. We're annoying it, and uh, we need to um, stop. <laughs> and even beyond that, 
we have to adapt to it. I mean, how much control do we really have? How much of a threat are we to this planet, really? I mean, how... Well, when, when the planet goes through such drastic changes like earthquakes and, and the solar flares just completely change the environment, but no matter what, no matter what happens in nature, naturally, without us getting involved at all, it always recovers. So, well, we are just another part of that nature. It is natural for us to be polluted. Um, we're just as violent as many other species. We're still very basic. And I'm not, and I'm not really saying that everything that we're doing is fine. I'm not crediting it and saying that's okay. I'm not saying it's bad either. I'm saying it's, it's all part of the process. And if we can't cope to the world's changes, we'll die. That's it. We're gone. The Earth destroys species constantly. We're trying to preserve species. Why? The Earth has destroyed species several times. It has to in order to continue living. It has to make changes. And, if the, and all those species can't adjust to its changes. It's its own being. Get it? It's got its own thing going on. And we're, we, and all our dogs and cats and, and trees and plant life and diseases, uh, all forms of life have to cope with what this planet goes through. It, we don't own this planet, it owns us. And if we can't adapt, we die. It's over. That's it for the human race. So get your shit in gear. Start buying some important stuff and get with your friends and the people that you care about. And not only that, start getting with people that you hate. Start getting with everybody that you know. And try just just try to make a difference. Try to get prepared. Um, anything. Just get get prepared for anything. Just try to connect with other people. By connecting with other people, you're gonna profit anyways. Might as well, right? And the better you know everyone around you, who knows what kind of opportunity might come up, career-wise, and also uh, health-wise. You never know when you're gonna be in a crisis and you need somebody. Maybe somebody has a radio and you don't. You know what I'm saying? Maybe somebody has a ladder. And they have, or they have the biggest building around, and uh, something happens, and you need to get to a high point, and you don't have any way to get there. Well, if you know the right people, you say, "Hey, you, you with the ladder, come with me. We're going over to this guy I know. He has a big house, and it's it's a brick shit house, so you can't be broken through. So we're going to climb up there, and I'm going to use your ladder, and we're going to try to get as many people to come with us as possible. That's what needs to be done, right there. Bam, got it. Hit. <laughs> Bit about it. How many people do you know go out there and do research and try to set up things to change, make changes? How many large organizations out there that are designed strictly for for uh, improving improving regulations and such? There's a lot, but how many people are actually in them? You know, it's only a select few, and it's generally people trying to get like tax write-offs and shit like that. People who people donate to charity, not be, most people donate to charity not because they want to donate money, they want to help out a good cause. No, because they want to write it off on their taxes. Everybody's trying to get ahead. Nobody's looking at the important picture. The important picture is that, and rather than thinking about how much money you could get, or thinking about how much you're spending to make changes, like like let's say make change from uh, from gas-powered cars to let's go above electric and and above um, the hybrids. And let's go to pure, uh, just, you know, water-powered cars or, or even magnetized power cars. If they could uh, put everything on a track and then they could just integrate all the systems. That way we'd never have fucking crashes. We wouldn't have accidents and it wouldn't be like a train. But it'd be like a train effect where we'd have a plate on the bottom and we'd just, we'd have a, basically a leveling plate on top. It's just basic physics. Um, there, there are several ways to go about, it'd be like a hovering, but it would be on a track, so to speak. And it would be impossible to go off the off the road, and that'd just be one way for high society to make a change. But then, what about all the lower people? You know, this, that's what I'm saying. Everything's divided. We need to bring up all the lower class to the same class. Everything needs to be the same. If if we want to, if we want to start boy start avoiding these catastrophes, these disasters. These disasters are happening because of human error. Because everybody's trying to prevent prevent the disaster from happening. But by trying to prevent it, we are causing the disaster. After Chernobyl, we made so many changes, and we thought, okay, let's build a new reactor, and we'll have all these changes made to it, and we'll try to make all these changes regulated all around the world. But then you got places like Japan, where they are always trying to cut corners because they're trying to uh, get ahead as quick as possible and save as much money. They're, they're probably the biggest, the biggest uh, examples of this. They're the, now they're the ones that are making the rest of the world pay for it. And if the whole world was acting in a unified motion, they would have said, no, you're going to build it the right way. And if we were even to take it a step further, if we were all thinking on the same path, we would, instead of trying to save money and uh, rebuild the reactors because 
let's face it, this is plutonium and uh, other of these nuclear resources are very easy to access and easy to make. So it's, it's a simple, quick, efficient way to work. But it's dangerous. It's dangerous to our planet. We have to live on this planet. You know, it's, it's, we try to control everything. We try to control all facts of life. But we're forgetting one detail. We're, li we're on a living organism. This planet is doing things that we cannot phys mentally, mentally figure out how to control. You can't figure out how to make a dog think a certain thing. You know what I'm saying? And dogs think. Why else would they drink? Dogs are thinking. It might be a very low level of thinking. It, it's mostly images that they associate with. Uh, but we can't. We don't understand the brain in a way that we could force them to see images and think certain things. We have to evolve. We have to move to a higher frequency of understanding. If you've been researching um, people like David Icke who talk about higher frequencies and you think, okay, this is a bunch of bull crap, this is a bunch of hocus pocus, H higher frequencies, frequencies are just wavelengths, that's just patterns. When they're saying frequencies, they're, they're referring to process, they're, they're referring to how, in a global scale, like a, not global, but like a spiritual scale. They're, they're speaking in a more spiritual sense because any sort of evolution requires internal change. I mean, you get rid of things that you don't need, and, and you also get rid of things that, that are causing trouble. So, in a sense, you have to change the way you think, because it's chemical reactions that power everything in your head. So technically, you're changing the way you think in order to adapt to, to the world around you. A disease starts killing off many, thousands of people, you know? Not, not only is that going to change a chemical balance in, in your body in order to adapt to it, but you're going to start seeing things in a different light. You're, you're going to start thinking, okay, how can I how can I help other people? Because you're gonna to need to help other people because that's just that's like instincts. You know what I'm saying? It's something you're born with. There, there's a lot that we're born with that we don't even tap into. We, it, it's so sad the fact that we take children and we put them in these little uh, pre little preschools, and that's like when the brain's at its best because we basically lose all our ability to learn. Like we lose our greatest capacity of of learning as we grow older you know it gets worse and worse and we start out at our best we start out at a very high level of, of absorption and it's at that time where in the schools we're putting like 30 50, 40 kids and little kids in the class like 20 or 40 kids in a little class little kids in class what what are they gonna you know how long it's gonna take them to get through just one thing like drawing a straight line when are they gonna get to two plus two you know what I'm saying? It's going to take them a lot longer. Have you ever noticed a homeschooled kid? Because they have direct focus all the time, by the time they do end up in regular school, they're at least three or four grades ahead of everybody else. That's because they had more personal connection, one-on-one. -on -one. We have too many kids being born, and we don't have, and the schools can't focus on you know just a few kids like they need to. The, the schools don't have enough money because the government's not making enough money. And it's all related to, to idiocracy, ultimately, because... If you've ever paid attention to birth levels, people of higher intelligence who, who are successful and, and are trying to make better of themselves and trying to increase their capacity to learn, uh, you know, through the different learning styles, audio, visual, um, hearing, and hands-on, you know, uh, experience. And it's those kind of people that are usually, they'll think about having a child, but they'll weigh all the different reasons why or why not to, and they'll make it a more logical decision. Rather than the stupid hillbillies that are sitting around drinking drug, uh, drinking alcohol all the time, doing drugs, or it's just anybody who who spends their time not thinking wisely, they spend their time, they waste times on drugs. And when I say drugs, I don't mean just like smoking cigarettes. I mean anything can be a drug. Playing video games all day, that's a drug. As far as I'm concerned, you're wasting time. You could be out learning. <sighs> You'll, great, you'll get so much more joy from working with others and coming up with things that will help other people in a, in a greater sense than a video game ever could. I'm, work, I'm at um, Phoenix University trying to get my um, doctorate in sci science study of psychology. And really working in groups, it's the best college ever because you only get like 10 students per class. And when you work in... And, you're, and they have you work in groups to do all these assignments and figure things out. And they, they tell they want you to to get the details. They want you to figure out the why and the how. And it's through doing that that just about anybody. You don't even have to be a very scientific person. I mean, just about anybody can f feel the, the joy, and 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 discovering something that can truly not just benefit themselves or that they can use in the real world, but benefit everybody.
and working in those teams. It's, it's always so much fun because you always meet new people and you'll be learning new things. And you got to really open yourself up. People need to open themselves up more. You see people walk, going through the elevator and they, they just they don't even look at each other, right? They just sit there and they just ignore each other. And it's awkward. That's because that's you got all these, this, these energies going on now. You got all this... Um, all these chemicals kicking in that are making you nervous. It, it's uh, anxiety. You're getting anxiety because you feel like you should say something, but you don't. Some people don't feel anything because uh, they're used to being bitter and cold. And that's part of uh, society's programming. I mean, the reason why people like all these types of drugs, like like um, like finding ways to procrastinate, uh, trying to avoid doing things that they need no need to be done, um, stressing out over things that don't need to be done. Stressing out over uh, unnecessary, unnecessary uh, projects or, or things in life that can be that don't have to be pushed off, but just not done altogether. If if you have the proper friends and you have the right connections, you can have somebody else do it. And they'll they'll do it because they're your friend. They'll do it because they like you, because they care about you. And that's the way the world needs to be. We need to get rid of. We we need to collaborate. And really, the only way to cause this sort of collaboration is for these disasters to happen, or else. We'll lose our race altogether. And right now, it's at the pinnacle. All the Greys did was calculate what's going to happen, how it's going to bubble up, and when it's all going to trickle down at its worst. And it's all a matter of basis, basic statistics of what's, how the, the, the changes are going on in the world. It was, if, if you pay attention to what's going on with the Earth due to how we're interacting with it, we're killing it. And if we do destroy this planet, what are we going to have? How are we going to restore our race? What are we going to do with a few astronauts on, on a moon with limited resources who are, who are hard up for finding more resources? No. We need to focus on survival. It's like we've become dumber. It's idiocracy, ultimately. If, if we had less people being born, if more people were starting to think more about, more about how they're breeding, then the schools could focus more on their students. And if there's more focus on the students, there would be even less people uh, being born. And it would be more focused on how, much, how many people we really need, uh, statistically, rather than how many people we need just, just to waste space. Because if you look at it in a spiritual sense, we are all reborn, basically. I mean, how do you describe uh, thoughts and dreams? Remembering things in your dreams. You remember things while you're dreaming. Some people do, or they see visions, because those are things from their past life. And then while they're dreaming, they're like, okay, I remember back when I was this person. And when you're in the dream, it all makes sense. But in real life, you're like, huh? And you don't remember most of it, because it's not from your life. It's from a different life. And it's your life that was interacting with it in the dream. Which is why when you're in the dream, you're remembering, I remember it happening this way. And then while you're doing, actually doing it, you're redoing it in the dream, because you redo things in dreams, you're redoing things that have already happened, or you're 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 doing things that that are that are necessary. In dreams, you're basically dreams are whatever is necessary in life, and your current life to get ahead. You know, you go through heaven and hell, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But my point is, my point is, is you, you remember how it happened, and then in the dream it happens differently, but it happens kind of similar. Like uh, I remember recently, I was in a dream where I was at this big circular counter. And it was kind of, I remember it came up from a long uh, road. And uh, I remember I drove up to it and I parked. And I came up to the counter and the counter was kind of like a deli counter with a big uh, um, sort of like, um, not tarp, but uh, oh, what do they call those? Just like a shade thing coming out of the side of a building with a deli counter coming out, out all around the circle part. And I remember in the, in the far left side of, of it, there was a, a glass dark tinted glass screening and then the rest for just like I don't know like 20 feet 20 30 feet and there were like three people sitting there and I noticed the the manager was a guy who I went to college with or went to school with I remembered it being school and this is the memory part and in the memory part I remembered uh what was it I remember that I got into an argument with the person at the deli counter when I was trying to buy some food and uh because I was messing with them because I was just being a dick and the manager guy came over the guy who I knew from college and he says, I know you. I'm going to kick your ass. And he hops over the counter. And he goes, I'm just kidding. And shakes my hand. And then, But in the dream, that was what I remembered. And in the dream, I interact with it differently. Because in dreams, you take memories from past lives. You interact with them to solve current problems. 
So I literally, usually you don't, sometimes you don't remember, sometimes you do. It, t it takes a special person, a special situation to actually remember while it's happening. But that, that's my proof right there. I mean, <laughs> that's my scientific proof is the fact that I was able to remember something before it happened. And when it happened, instead of him jumping over the counter, I said something stupid that came from this current life form. And, uh, you know, it's something that I thought of in this current life. And he, he jumped over the counter and chased me. And I was like, holy shit, this guy's fucking insane. And he was beefy and huge. I remember that. So I was, I was really fucking scared. So I just bolted over to my truck and I was driving down the road. And he got in his car, little, uh, it was like a little tiny car. It was definitely like my past life. Because they were looking, they were like old, um, what do you call those, like the muscle cars? You could tell it was like from my previous life. It wasn't like a long lost life. It was like my previous life because they were, they were, they were uh, almost standard. But um, I remember that uh, it was a long chase. And it's just, and so it's through dreams that I realized that, you know, it doesn't matter how many people we have on this planet. It doesn't matter at all. As long as, because the people are just going to be reborn into a, a new life form. The cycle is just going to keep going. And that new life form is going to remember things from the past life. And that new life form is going to go through heaven and hell as it's alive. You know, he heaven and hell is here on earth. It it's going to go through heaven and hell in the sense that uh, anything bad happening, it's, it's going to be seeing hell when it goes to sleep. So that way it can try to figure out what it's doing wrong. It's all good. It's all there to help you. And... If, if we want to, you know, survive this transition, because this, okay, it's been calculated now, and this transition is coming, and due to recent changes, it was originally going to end, like, the transition was going to end in 2015, but instead, because recently, we've actually been doing some better things, and we've been trying to improve by creating a lot of organizations, things have changed, and now it is delayed to two, um, 2018, I think, uh, seven years from now, yeah, 2018, seven years from now, where it's going to escalate to its worst. Uh, basically, just because of the trickle-down effect, the war, you know, um, um, the, the earthquake, the, the, the way we interact with um, the, the, the problems that it causes, the, the turmoil. And at a certain point, if we don't all get together and say, okay, I'm ready to unify, I'm ready to start working as one, I'm tired of working as an individual. And then, you know, the, the sooner we do that, the sooner the Greys will actually, will actually uh, back out of um, making it worse. But as it stands right now, if we keep going the way we're going, the Greys are going to make sure that it gets even worse. They're going to make sure that it gets to the point where we're going to lose everything and we'll be stuck with an option. Either unify, start working together, like, um, like the Aztecs did, even though they, they were still wrong about a lot of things. How do you think they were able to achieve such high levels of intelligence? That's because they all work together. You, you know about how they, they, they saw the women and men as fairly equal and they wanted everybody to work together. Um, that's because they, they worked on a unifying theory. It wasn't based off of money so much. It, you know, money was there. A form of money was there. A form of, form of trade was there. But they didn't rely on it. They relied more on each other and personal connections. And that's what we need to do. We don't have to destroy our money system. But, you know, we need to change how we interact with it. We can't depend on it. We have to make this transition. And if we don't, things are just kind of escalate. Things are going to just whoo, trickle down. And, you know, that's what I've been kind of trying to say for a while now. So I want everybody start raising their hands and say, I'm ready for the transition. The more people I can get to say, I'm ready for the transition, the, the more people, you know, the, the less problems we'll have because the transition is mostly happening because we're not re ready to change. It's because we're not wanting to change, because things are so bad right now and they're getting worse. And <laughs> everybody knows well how bad a trickle-down effect can get, how bad a snowball, can, how big a snowball can get if you throw it down a hill, roll it down a hill and oof. So we're in a heap of trouble. We need to do something about it. All right, thanks for listening. Uh, this is final from FUX Fox News. And I hope to start hearing some people say, I'm ready for the transition. I've already told Ricky, you know. Uh, I told him, hey, we need to start getting people together and saying, hey, I'm ready for the transition. We need to start people. Uh, because if everybody's operating on a separate pattern, then we need to utilize that separate pattern to transfer it into a global pattern. The only way to do it is to, uni to unify everybody on one spectrum. And if we get everybody on one spectrum, then we can start working on it. So first things first, we need to get everybody to say, I'm ready for a transition. If we don't, things are just going to get worse. All right, well, thanks for listening.